Hey guys, Tony here. Hope you're doing well. It is Friday, March 1st. Hope you're holding strong in this new asset class that is cryptocurrencies. I have some big news to share with you guys. First and foremost, this is not financial or investment advice. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Also smash the like button. Now guys, we got an update from Fidelity digital assets so as you know fidelity fidelity digital assets is set to launch this month right we heard uh their news about this maybe about two months ago um so they are preparing to launch and we have an update here from abigail johnson who is fidelity's chairman and ceo um here's the headline from the block they are not in a hurry and they want to do this right fidelity is kicking off crypto custody with a soft launch so really nothing groundbreaking here most companies when they're launching a new service or product or whatever right they do a soft launch to make sure they go through all the kings the trial and errors make sure there's no problem because if you scale too fast right if you launch this to the public and there's issues that the, the you know the, the potential for uh putting your business at risk and and to you know create a bad experience can tarnish your brand so this is nothing surprising but the reason why it's important is they are still on track it's not like they're delayed or anything right um now the block they they make you pay for articles now so i can't even read the whole thing but i'll give you some of the highlights here uh fidelity is kicking off its cryptocurrency business with a soft launch the block has learned that five firms are participating in the trial the launch of fidelity's much awaited crypto business is starting off small um to start, the firm will only offer its custody services to a select group of clients as part of a pilot period. And uh, the people said, declining to speak on the record, that they agreed not to disclose information. Blah 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 blah. And of course, I can't read the rest. But like I said, guys, this is nothing surprising. Any business, any industry, people do soft launches. Then you roll into a hard launch, right? This is to make sure everything is working properly. So. They are still moving ahead and um, of course a major player they manage um, guys so much money uh, trillions in assets and imagine some of that money of their clients money coming over to crypto um, and of course they're going to offer a custody services and one of the major things that uh, the big money needs is custody and protection security assurance insurance right these are things we've talked about even the sec has talked cited one of their concerns about approving the Bitcoin ETF is that there needs to be proper uh, custodial services in the market. So uh, let's hope Fidelity, uh, once they're in their hard launch, full launch, is is one of the companies that actually meet that requirement. Um, and that would be great. But we are heading down the right path. Now, we got some interesting news coming out of the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve may add Bitcoin crash to stress test scenarios. This is interesting. Crypto is getting so big, it's getting recognized by obviously the governments, the big money, um, just these traditional finance guardrails and laws and regulations and so forth. Is it crypt? It's it's all coming to crypto now, and that's why I've been saying this market is the new asset class that's going to be positioned the same way the stock market is. Look at all the the financial instruments and products and services being built around it, right? So the U.S. Federal Reserve will soon include a crypto market crash as one of its one of the risks to take into account when conducting supervisory stress tests. The Fed's Board of Governors on Thursday announced amendments to a policy on the scenario design framework for stress testing, saying that the collapse of the Bitcoin market may be considered as one of the salient market risks. Now, I wouldn't say collapse because what they don't, I don't, I don't know why they say this. It didn't collapse. You had a correction. What they don't give is the context that you had a crazy parabolic run up, right? In a matter of weeks, Bitcoin went from a few thousand dollars to near twenty thousand dollars. So a lot of them don't give that context, and um, and the reason being is because smart money they understand these things and they don't share the this type of knowledge with the average Joes. They don't want you to know the context of anything. They just want you to grab the headline. Oh my God, it crashed! So people will just be sent running, right? According to the document. The crypto amendment was recommended to the board by a com commenter who proposed it should be seen as one of these several extraordinary uh, shocks, such as the war with North Korea and major losses caused by trader misconduct. Uh, I don't know if it's on the same level as war with North Korea. That seems kind of weird, but 
maybe they're they're thinking ahead. Maybe they're thinking when Fidelity and TD Ameritrade and Backed and all these people start pumping the money, uh, pumping the prices back up in mass marketing, that if it has a correction um, at higher prices, maybe. But I wouldn't say it's on the same level as North Korea, war with North Korea, really? I mean, seriously, like, uh, that seems kind of weird. Um, so let's see where this goes. Like I said, maybe they're thinking about future prices, higher prices, and that, you know, those corrections being significantly impactful um, to, to the market and the economy in general. So who knows? But it's interesting the Federal Reserve is taking note of this. Uh, now, we have some positive news here from um, Rhode Island. So the headline, U.S. state moves to exempt some blockchain tokens from securities rules. This is what the Token Taxonomy Act is trying to do, right? Take crypto digital assets and position them outside of the existing 70-year-old securities laws, which, of course, does not make sense, right, guys? Uh, lawmakers in the U.S. state of Rhode Island are seeking to exempt blockchain tokens from securities laws for some use cases. Five Democratic and Republican senators uh, jointly file House Bill 5595 on Wednesday, proposed that, uh, proposing that the Rhode Island Uniform Securities Act's should be amended to state that the developers or sellers of open blockchain tokens are not deemed as issuers of securities on and are exempt from the act. The exemption, however, should be provided under certain conditions, the lawmaker said. First, the purpose of a token must be for a consumptive purpose and only be exchangeable for or provided for the receipt of goods, services, or content, including rights of access to goods, services, or content. Secondly, the developers or sellers of a token should not sell it to the initial buyers as a financial investment. They said, uh, adding, if the token does not have a consumptive purpose available at the time of sale, the initial buyer of the token is pre prevented from reselling the token until the token is available for use for a consumptive, consumptive purpose. So, Interesting that states now are taking action to, and we saw Wyoming um, doing some th things like this too, where they're trying to kind of move the, you know, move the needle forward here with um, getting some clarity on crypto and digital assets. Um, but like I said, the federal law or the, or the bill that the Congress is reviewing that is being spearheaded by Darren Soto and Warren Davidson, that is looking to make this federal law, right guys? So let's, I, I'm great. It's great that these states are doing this, but at the end of the day, if you have different states with different laws, it's not going to be ideal. But I think this this is more maybe something that will put a pressure on the Congress to do it because the Congress is made up, made up by representatives from different states. So uh, in that way, I see it good for the Token Taxonomy Act as far as individual states doing their own thing. Are not ideal. We need the federal level to pass a law, and that will affect the SEC as well as CFTC. So, uh, interesting stuff here, guys. Now, we're going to jump to some Ripple news. Um, we got a lot of stuff to cover here. As you know, there's been a lot of positive updates for XRP being listed on Coinbase, of course. Uh, their investments with Spring and, and many other things that we heard about six new uh clients going to be running on XRapid. This was in January, of course. Um, and it's just a lot of positive news over the past two months. Well, um, there was also some FUD around JPM coin. JP Morgan's coin would compete with uh, XRP. But of course, JPM coin is exclusive to JP Morgan. It is not an open network um, neutral party where different banks can participate on an open exchange that XRP uh, and the XRP ledger provides. So Binance Research, JPM coin unlikely to directly compete with Ripple's XRP for now. So right now, as it is, it does not compete because once again, XRP is looking to be a bridge asset for the transfer of money globally by different institutions globally, right? With different currencies. JPM coin is more of an internal coin that's being used to move their uh, respective money, maybe with their direct partners. But that doesn't mean every bank will cooperate or want to handle JPM coin, right? And once again, it goes back to the trust factor. Um, so the research arm of top crypto exchange Binance has published an analysis of JP Morgan's new announced stablecoin, arguing that digital coin brings, uh, the, the digital coin brings minimal direct competition to Ripple XRP in the near term. Um, so it was published today by uh, Binance Research. So I'm not even going to go through, uh, go through uh, details on this because I think those of you who 
we've kind of covered this already. Like it is not a competitor right now. It's a stable coin um, that's within JP Morgan's hub, so to speak. Right. So we also have some news here for Ripple. Um, so you, you guys know, like some people have been trying to sue Ripple, saying XRP is a security and so forth. Well, we have an update here. Ripple scores minor victory in U.S. securities class action lawsuit. A judge has ruled that an ongoing class action lawsuit against Ripple must refrain must remain in federal court, potentially giving the payments firm a slight advantage going forward. U.S. District Judge Phyllis Hamilton of the North Korea, uh, North Korea, North District of California ruled Thursday that a class action lawsuit filed against Ripple and affiliated subsidiaries and individuals will not be shifted back to lower courts after lawyers for the company first moved to the district court last year. This is a minor but meaningful victory for the firm, said Cobri Kim, attorney Jake Servinsky uh, on Twitter. So, I wouldn't say this is something major here as far as, you know, groundbreaking. Obviously, the 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 uh, lawsuit is still in play, but keeping it at a different level is uh, at, at where it was moved is good for for Ripple. So let's see how this plays out. We've seen some other stuff get shot down as well. Um, I don't think Ripple's going to lose this. And um, we've like I said, we've covered this. This is just an update. I think if you guys been subscribed to my channel, we've covered this over and over these different lawsuits. And uh, I remember one guy was suing because he lost $500 or something that got kicked out. So it's one of those things where companies, as you guys know, whether you're Google, you're Amazon or whoever, you're going to get lawsuits, right? These things usually are handled not that publicly, given that the market is so young and um, Ripple, you know, XRP is number or number three. And there's a lot of uh, news being built up around here around crypto like coindesk and coin telegraph and so forth they're quick to report on even stuff like this which may not even need to have a headline but that's just my opinion i could be wrong but i'm just saying and here's jake uh servinsky Sir i actually messaged him trying to get an interview with him um where he where he uh you know says this case means that the case stays in federal court a minor but meaningful victory once again I don't think this necessarily needed headlines, but just want to let you guys know about it. Now, we're seeing tons and tons of FUD coming out of Forbes. I guess I, here's what I think is going on. I think Forbes is um, paying people now to, to probably write certain types of content, and we're seeing certain contributors um, who are just writing a lot of FUD. And the latest one is Ripple a scam, calling it a pump and dump. And it's like, really? Are you serious? Brad Garlinghouse, the CEOs in the Ripple, they're working with the IMF. They're, they're working with central banks globally. Uh, they're at fintech conferences and so forth, and they're running a pump and dump. It's ridiculous. Um, and it's it's Forbes is just lowering their quality of content. And it's like, you know, it's not even like, oh, well, here's we see a problem with Ripple or how to handle it. It's more of sensationalism. Is Ripple a scam? Question mark. Right. It's like trying to get these like low quality clickbait articles. So I'm not even going to go through it. But if you guys saw it, it's it, essentially trying to say that their, their business model is a pump and dump. And it's like, really? They're working with American Express, Santander Bank, um, MoneyGram, Western, you know, all these other companies. And they're a pump and dump. They're working with SBI for, uh, group, part of a 60 bank consortium in Japan, and they're a pump and dump. So the person who wrote this is an ass, an idiot. Um, I, I, because it's not like, like I said, if he, if the narrative is important here, it's not that you can't say, well, I think I see a flaw here, right? Or, or be provide constructive criticism, um, where you say, well. Something doesn't seem to line up here, but the, what they do, they sensationalize it and they leave a lot of open-ended questions, right? They're not directly saying, like, for example, they're not saying Ripple is a scam, but they're, they're, they sensationalize the headline, is Ripple a scam? So we didn't really directly say it. We're just, you know, uh, trying to change a narrative and make people think a certain way. So it's a typical FUD, and we've been seeing this over the past um, maybe six months where Ripple, with the launch of XRapid and a lot of updates and investments and um, new partners and new XRapid clients, the FUD campaign has increased significantly, guys. It's it's really, really interesting to see. Um, and I, I can't wait. Um, 
it's when these people are all proven wrong as the market progresses and and ripple continues to grow its network and more clients go in x rapid and we also i also call this guy out peter brandt i follow him um here's his profile trader of classical charting principles since 1980 author number one amazon trading book diary of a professional commodity trader published publisher of the week weekly factor service so he singled out XRP and look at his comment. The XRP daily chart has all the earmarks of a manipulated market. Manipulated markets historically have not ended well for bag holders. But wait a minute, Peter. Um, the entire market's manipulated. If you've been a subscriber to this channel, we've talked about this, right? And I tweeted to him, like, do you know that the entire market is being manipulated right now? XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, every freaking chart, right? Um, we all, we have all the crap coin uh, pump and dumps, like coins we never heard of getting pumped 100% overnight, that type of thing. Um, and I tweeted, like, we're very early and there isn't any regulation. It's the wild, wild west. We've talked about this, guys. So why would you single out XRP? Um, and I said, unless you have a hidden, hidden agenda, right? If he said, look, all the charts for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, the top three, top five, why single out XRP? We've seen the Bitcoin uh, charts. We've seen manipulation on that and, and pump and dumps, right? Because I think he has an agenda here. I think he's a Bitcoin maximalist, Bitcoin bag holder. So he's, once again, these people are getting very nervous, very scared of the progress being made by XRP, Ripple, R3, SBI. They're very scared. It's it's your classic um, FUD campaign, right? You're trying to um, smear the competition because you feel threatened by them. So it's interesting. Um, and, <laughs> um, man, it's just so funny to see, see these people are, are putting out all this FUD. Uh, now Ethereum. So Ethereum's Constantinople and St. Petersburg upgrade is live. So finally, Ethereum's latest upgrade, Constantinople, St. Peter, St. Petersburg went live at block 7,280,000. According to ethernodes.org, just 21.9% of Geth and Parity clients have upgraded their software to the Constantinople compatible version. Um, block times are expected to return to 15 seconds, uh, having risen to an average of 20 seconds over the last month due to an increasing uh, effects of the difficulty bomb. So some progress on Ethereum's front. I am bullish on Ethereum. It's in my portfolio. I hold XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and many others. Um, I, I, there's just a lot of building happening on the Ethereum network, guys. So I'm bullish on Ethereum for sure. Um, Circle, so as you guys know, uh, Circle is a big crypto uh, investment firm backed by Goldman Sachs. They bought Poloniex. Um, obviously, they do a lot of OTC trading. We, we had talked about their year-over-year -year OTC growth. So Circle introduces market surveillance to fight insider trading pump and dump schemes. Now, I just talked about this this guy, right, uh, Peter, whatever his face is, uh, Peter Brandt, um, and he's singling out, singling out XRP, but as you can see, the professionals, the big players even recognize this is happening across the board. It's not just XRP. Uh, so blockchain finance company Circle will use digital finances, financial services company Nice and Tima, and Actis, oh, Act, I can't even pronounce that right now. I don't know why. It's just one of those days. Uh, market monitoring tools to fight manipulation. Uh, so the company, which forms a brand, which which forms a branch of Israeli uh, enterprise software giant Nice Ltd, uh, offers professional client tools in the areas of financial crime, risk, and compliance. So this is actually great, guys. They are looking to bring adaptive, innovative technology solutions such as financial markets compliance solutions from NIS to meeting the potential needs of regulators and protecting our assets uh, brings this commitment full circle. So this is great. This is what we need because, you know, we see, this is the wild, wild west. We need government regulations. We need all kinds of software and tools to prevent pump and dumps and, and market manipulation. And these are the things that are going to have to be put into place for the growth of this market. Um, so big move by circle here. Um, and, uh, you know, with the governments are also, uh, along with regulations here, looking to protect consumers, make sure financial crimes and so forth aren't being done. So uh, the FATF issues preliminary guidelines on digital assets to combat money laundering. So I'm not even going to go through in the full details here. The FT 
FATF stands for Financial Action Task Force. So they're looking to essentially make sure money laundering, funding of terrorism is not being used by crypto. Um, so why am I sharing this with you? It shows, once again, where crypto is headed. They're putting the guardrails in place for the growth of this new asset class. And that's why you got to count yourself lucky you're here early ahead of the curve. These are the same things that were put into place for the internet, right? When the internet launched and all kinds of websites started being built, so you can make the analogy, the internet's the blockchain is the internet and the projects being built on blockchain or cryptos and so forth are the equivalent of software, websites, tools being built on the internet back in the 90s. Well, the government at that time had to put guardrails in um, for people not to be, for example, um, you know, like child pornography, gambling, certain gambling rules, um, selling of certain you know black market stuff right things that could be done on online where or, or even sex trafficking right the sale and the movement of certain information that's illegal of course could have been done online so they had to put the respective laws in place and that's what's happening now so i hope you guys see the holistic bigger picture here and where we're headed because uh we are certainly ahead of the curve very early and very lucky so uh the future is bright we just got to be patient and as we can see the big players are launching fidelity and others um and we just like i said guys be patient so guys what do you think about this news leave your thoughts and comments below thumbs up if you like this video please subscribe if you haven't already don't forget to follow me on facebook and twitter if you'd like to support the channel check out my patreon group as well as my donation addresses um of course not mandatory if you like to support or tip thank you very much i appreciate the support and i'll talk to you all later